Hello, today I'm going to be talking a bit about this familiar deck that I used to win the um, Saturday challenge. Um, I'm not going to talk a whole lot about the main deck because this is largely the same main deck that I uh, used in the first video that I posted. Um, and this is basically just Campo's main deck uh, minus a few changes to the mana base. One thing I do want to talk about though is the three prismatic turns in the sideboard. Um, I Played, I've been playing a lot versus mono red, as anybody who's playing popper plays a lot versus mono red. And I found that Hydroblast is actually not very good versus the, the deck. Like, there are a lot of games where you have Hydroblast in your opening hand, but you have to tap out for something, then they get to resolve their Cold Oath Rebirth or their Reckless Impulse, and you never really got a chance to use this effectively. Or oftentimes they'll like play a Swiss Spear and you'll kill it for one mana, but while well, that's okay, it's not the greatest thing you could be getting out of a sideboard card. And the other thing that I found was that the games where I drew Prismatic Strands were way easier to win than the games where I didn't draw Prismatic Strands. So I just decided to play 4 in the 75. Um, and that's been working out pretty well. I can envision a world where the Mono Red decks start playing 2 or 3 um, of the Damage Can't Be Prevented this turn card, uh, Flaring Pain. And at that point, it's probably more worth it to go heavier on the Hydro Blast and less Prismatic Strands. But... A lot of the red decks don't even run any copies of Flaring Bane, so I think this is it's at least been working for me. All right, let's get into the games. Okay, round one. Sand is totally fine. Has a faithful bounce land on the play. Cycle play bounce land. So my opponent's on affinity. Blood Fountain. So they probably have a counter, and I decide to evoke into the counter. Which I guess it's fine, spending my mana. I don't really have much other action, so this could have been a mistake, but I think it's okay. And they tap out for an Enforcer. Player Familiar. In this matchup, you definitely have to um, be the aggressor, because Affinity is a better control deck than you are in game one. So I don't have a, a spell to return. So I need to top deck something here. Taking seven. They have four cards in it. So I top back the Modern Age, which is great because I can turn these lanes into real cards. Drifter. So now I just. There's no counter spell they can have here with just um, this two mana, so. They decided to, to bargain in response, which is fine. I find a Strands. It's going to be good against uh, Crookland Shaman if they draw that. And here I decide. Let's see, I'm, I was at 13. So I don't block because I'm not dead to a single Galvanic Blast, but I am dead to two of them. Maybe I should have blocked, but I feel like all my creatures are really valuable, so this is fine. I play Munitions, pass. Get to loot away the Strands, play another Faithful, start getting some life. Play Arcane Answer, turn to Preordain. And here I'm just going to pass and plan to Flicker in combat and make them at least sacrifice some permanence to the Munitions. So I block, flicker. So here they have to use five, they have to sacrifice five permanents if they want to wipe this, because I have four toughness here and prismatic experience in the graveyard. And then if they have a, like a galvanic blast, I can counter that with prohibit. They shoot, flashback strands, forcing them to shoot now. They shoot, and again. And like, if they're going all in on this beatdown plan, it should be fine because I have two faithfuls in play, so as long as I keep chaining spells together, it shouldn't be that effective. So now they're down to one land, two lands. Frogmite is useless. Alright. He has Preordain, find an Arcane Answer, which is great. For some reason, the, as usual, the replays are lagging a bit. There were actually a couple games where the replays just stopped and didn't finish. So there's a few matches that don't um, actually complete themselves. I think one of them is in the finals, which is unfortunate. But What are you going to do? Okay. 
I can skip forward a bit. Nope, I return Ghostly Flicker. Cast a Preordain. I don't want either of those. Draw Chancery. <coughs> they attack for 7. I think I can just take the damage here because I'm at 16. Should be fine. I draw Ephemerate, which is great. If they want to sack two permanents, that's totally fine. Like they don't really have two permanents to sack that are that are good. So now I just feel like I'm in a commanding spot. Find Sage's Row. I don't think I want that at this point. Maybe you could make an argument for it, but yeah, for some reason Magic Online did not like this. So I bought them both, draw Ashbrands, pass the turn, and I still have an Ephemerate in exile. They have a swamp. So I have to block something or else I'm going to die to munitions. Let's see what I block. I'm going to block both. Go for a flicker. They start shooting. Can't do anything about that. I do lose my ephemerates. Maybe this was bad. I could have like blocked with something else. Mm. Yeah, this might have been a mistake. They have a spell bomb. I'm going to counter it. Yeah, I can see this being a mistake. I think I probably would have played this differently. All right, I loot, draw Seagate Oracle, which is great. Because now I can draw some cards. Kelsey Flicker, Preordain, Arcane Answer, and they're dead. Game two for the sideboard. So I boarded out two faithfuls, one familiar. I boarded out the strands, and then I also boarded out the sages row and both the flickers. And then I boarded in four dust to dust, two revoke existence, one to spell. I think um, I've talked about this a bit before, but prismatic strands is just not very good versus them because it doesn't actually fog their creatures. And then the familiar isn't as good because you don't have as many blue cards. And the faithfuls, you just kind of have to trim. Um, because your plan is to exile the creatures, not to really flog them with the faithful. All right, the sand is good. I need to either draw white mana or a way to draw cards, which is a lot of my deck. I have a lot of white sources, I have a lot of cantrips, I have a lot of ways to draw cards in my deck. So this is fine. I just have to find one of those quickly or else I'm going to get drowned out by the card advantage. Draw a snap, so that could be a white source if they play a creature. Not counting on that because they probably board out their frog mites. So I play the familiar. At least, like, the familiar is strong for my deck, but obviously I have, I have one blue spell, so if they kill it, it's totally fine. They sacrifice their land to daily dispute. That is a good sign for me. So I play the faithful. Pick up the island. So no next turn I can I can dust them. And then dust them again. And then pick up another dust to dust from the graveyard and dust them again. And they just conceded the first one. So sometimes it works out. Sometimes you need a lot of dust to dust, and sometimes you just need one. Alright, round two. Sand is great. You could use another land, but there we draw it. And I'm, I don't think I've ever seen anybody play Tranquil Thicket against me and Popper. So I was like, what on earth are they doing? They play Vessel of Nascency. So I assume they were on Tortured Existence, which I don't think I've ever seen anybody play this deck on Magic Online. Like, I'm not that, like, I'm pretty new to Popper, but I don't know. It's a bizarre deck. Play Familiar. They reveal three lands and a monarch card. So now, I don't really have a good way to counter this. Like, I needed to draw Prohibit exactly to counter this. Um, so I think my plan is just to try to outguard it. Like, I can play Seagate Oracle and snap it and attack and force them to replay it. Um, we'll see. Play the Seagate Oracle. And, okay, I'm answer. <laughs> so they play the monarch. They draw 
And end of turn I ephemerate. I don't know if I would do this again, because this is basically just one mana sleight of hand. And next turn I, I could have gone like Float a blue, snap. Hmm. Float another blue, snap the faithful. Arcade Mancer, pick up snap. Ephemerate, pick up. I don't know. I guess this is fine. I don't really have a use for the ephemerate. So all I'm picking up is a snap if I use it on the Arcade Mancer. Find a preordain. I think I probably just wanted to have my land drop. So I don't ephemerate the Seagate Oracle so I can take back the Monarch, force them to replay it. Another fam. Attack. Draw two with deep analysis. Secret Oracle finds a bounce land, perfect. Arcane Mancer picks up, picks up Ephemerate, and this game's over. I don't really know what their deck does in this format, to be honest, but my win condition doesn't use combat, so. I think that if they don't resolve Crypt Rats, there's just like a 0% chance they can win. All right, draw two, draw some more. Focal Drifter, Ephemerate the Drifter. Nothing really interesting here. I guess they could like draw Crypt Rats, play Crypt Rats, play a Swamp, and then wipe my board. I guess that doesn't work because I have Prismatic Strands now, but I have no idea how they would win. Otherwise, return ephemerate. Now I have a counter, so I can just counter everything they play. Hey, fog. Evoke a Drifter, Snap a Drifter, yield zero mana draw two. Actually, nets a mana in this case. Cast the Drifter for one mana. And now I'm just drawing through my deck until I find um, Sage's Row. Because there's, there's nothing they can win with, so I'm just slowly drawing through my deck. Crypt Rats, not allowed. Counter that. Return Crypt Rats, but it doesn't matter because I have infinite counters. I also have infinite life here, but that doesn't matter. And they scoop. Alright, how did I sideboard? I have a feeling there's not going to be any sideboard guides for this matchup. So I kept the strands in. I just boarded out two faithfuls for two revoke existence. I guess this makes sense because they're not really a beatdown deck and having answers to the enchantment seems reasonable. All right, one lander, got a mulligan. This seems fine. Tranquil Cove. The turn one cycle Baron Moore doesn't exactly inspire confidence. So I discard Godfrey's Faithful and they play Crypt Rats, so I need to answer this. Preordain, bottom both, I think. Yeah, bottom both, miss the land. <laughs> but their plan is brown scale beats. So I don't think my deck is going to lose to a 2 3 for 3 mana. At least I hope not. Decided to evoke a mole drifter. Just use all my mana. Makes sense. They pop crypt rats. I'm sure they're glad they invested in their three mana two three and then killed it. They cast fairy macab. So they probably have more fairy macabs in their hand, but this explains why their deck is not doing anything. They cast. They use a fairy macab to exile some stuff. Doesn't really matter. Play auger of skulls. I do not care if they make me discard two cards. Not even at all. 
You can bot them both. It's always interesting with fams, because you obviously want to use your fetch lands before you cast Preordain, but there's a lot of turns where you end up drawing into untapped lands and you want to play those instead of playing the fetches. Whereas like in older formats, you would use your fetch land before you cast Preordain. Something to think about. I think I generally lean towards not using it, but who knows if that's right. They loot, discard snap. I was kind of hoping they use this so I could discard the deep analysis. I guess I didn't. I guess I was playing around graveyard hit because if I wait till my main phase, the beginning of my main phase, this will trigger. And then if I flash it back, they won't have priority to um, use graveyard hit. Not that it matters. I don't imagine losing the game to the hard casting we Turn ephemerate. And they use frame cob. Just fine again. Now they have no cards in their hand. Discard deep analysis. Familiar flashback TA. Preordain, find another deep analysis. Just got infinite cards. I am a bit worried about dying, I guess, because the only faithfuls that are in my deck are both in my graveyard. So realistically it doesn't really matter. Attack for one. Try two cards. Try two more. Just holding up a, a prohibit in case they draw Crypt Rats, because that could kill me. Another familiar. Seagate Oracle. And Seagate Oracle was so good, this whole challenge. Third familiar. Still holding up a counter. I chose not to block the Stinkweed Imp because they could dredge it. And I don't want to trade with the Stinkweed Imp when I could block the 2-2, two, 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 but at this point I'm going to have a Mildred from play next turn, so it's fine to block, I think. Play Vessel. They return Crypt Rats with a Vessel. So that I have a counter for that. I take a Flicker. I'm close to winning. Modern Age. I can draw two for a blue. Do that once. Found a snap, so that's more mana. I guess I just pass, because I can draw two other ends type a bunch of times. I don't envision losing this game when I have three prohibits in my hand. Three effective copies of prohibit at least. So I counter the creature. I don't know, it doesn't really matter. What I do here? I think this is a spot where Magic Online was not very happy with uh, the game for some reason. I'm gonna skip forward. Yep. Returning Ghostly Flicker. Okay, let's go back 10 seconds. Return Ghostly Flicker. Upkeep. Loot, discard prismatic strands, I guess. Put the faithful on top, so now I can gain infinite life if I want, and they scoop. So we definitely got lucky in the pairings for the round two, but we take those. Round three, on the play. Keep this hand. I think my opponent was on burn. I think I know that this person likes to play burn. This hand, while not being great versus burn, is I think good enough on the play. We have our best card. <sighs> they start with the blast runner. Draw Seagate Oracle, which is nice. I don't have anything anything to do on turn two, but maybe they respect a uh, prohibit and don't play uh, the rebirth or whatever. So they they chain landing our face, which when the burn opponents are just firing burn spells at our face, I feel like it's very easy to win. So they pass, we cycle. I really don't want to play this prismatic strands until I have a white creature to immediately get the flashback value. And there we go, there's a white creature. So next turn I can play the faithful, hold up strands, I play the rebirth. Attack for three. They only have one land. That's what they get for not playing cantrips. They draw a land. 
I decided to block. <coughs> I think it's fine. <coughs> Could see get Oracle on top. They're shocking our face, which seems odd to me, but to each their own. I play synth, rebirth the synth, and then I strands in response. Because this blast can only be used until end of turn. So if they have a land in their hand or off the synth, they can respond to prismatic strands with the galvanic blast. When I do it this way, they can't. Choose red. Yes, with spear. They don't have a land. So now let's see what I do. I guess I play, play Seagate Oracle. Find a priority and play that. Prohibit, priority, I think. I keep both. So now I have a counter, in case they have reckless impulse. I am taking some damage here, but I can flash back strands to. And this is where, like, this is why Seagate Oracle is nice versus the red deck. It's because they're going to attack with an army of 1 1s. And at least with Seagate Oracle, it costs them a 1 1 every time they want to attack. Whereas with the Faithfuls, they're just kind of get, they get to free roll and attack every turn. Okay, Mancer. Turn Brewden. Brewden. Find Ephemerate. Perfect. Bushwhacker. Definitely counter that. Line up some blocks. Implement. And now I'm I pretty much just win because I can loop counter spells. Find a snap. It'd be nice if I had a familiar so I could go drifter, snap drifter, but beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Return a counter. I could double block, but like, what's the point? I'm at 13, I'll just take three. We get another counter. They kill the Anaplast, try to break it up. We hit play the counter, they know about, and they can see. <sighs> okay. Game two versus red. Okay, so I've done different things in my sideboard versus red, but what I'm currently doing, well, I, can, I kind of waffle on what I currently do, but what I did in this match at least was minus one Ephemerate, minus one Ghostly Flicker, minus one Sage's Row, minus one Prohibit. I just want deep analysis for minus one more trade mire. I kind of change how I sideboard based on if they have um, might have rays, I might leave more counters in. And if they might have like goblin bushwhacker, um, I might leave more creatures in and take out like the deep analysis card card advantage stuff. Um, but I, I brought in three strands and three hydroblast. Oftentimes you can just look at the opponent and like if they're playing red they're gonna play the same deck most of the time and you can tell what they're gonna be on. This hand is like perfect. Turn one faithful, turn two modern age discard strands. Can't ask for much better. And they have a powerful start. This is definitely definitely good lose. This is the power of strands though. So they play a relic. I flashback strands. They play Reckless Impulse, they have a Pyroblast and a Chain Lightning. So I decided to cast Seagate Oracle, try to hit another land drop for next turn, and make them at least use their burn spells on the board. Choose the Pyroblast and Seagate Oracle, and leave the Chain Lightning in exile. <clears throat> so I decided to block. One thing that I've learned is that Sometimes you don't want to block because damage plus a 3 damage burn spell will be able to kill the faithfuls. But what I found is that if you force them to use their burn spells on their faithfuls as early as possible, it stops them from developing. So for example, if they go Swiss Spear attack, you don't block, and they have a burn spell in their hand and a creature in their hand, they're going to play the creature on their second main phase, and then the next turn you're in an even worse spot because now they have more creatures and they still have the burn spell. Um, and oftentimes the creatures are like prowess creatures. So as they develop more and more of them, the burn spells get stronger the more creatures they have. So I found that like just kind of aggressively blocking and forcing action. And this spot the, the burn spells in exile, so it doesn't really matter, but um, aggressively blocking and forcing action can be good. 
They burn the faithful as expected. Play another faithful, cast Preordain. I have a familiar and a deep analysis. I bought them both. I already have card advantage on a familiar. Just looking for more strands. Okay, Pyroblast the Vector Glider. I'll try it rather than Pyroblast the Vector Glider than Pyroblast the uh, Moldrifter on the stack. So I attack, I'll block. And strands would be, would be my best draw. So I have a Drifter, so I'd go for a Drifter of Hemorrhite. They don't have a counter. Let's see if they have a burn spell. They do not. So now I have Prismatic Strands if I get to untap, which it looks like I will get to untap. And like in this spot, Prismatic Strands is so much better than Hydroblast would be. Like, Hydroblast would trade for the Swiss and this is just a double time walk. So, maybe not a double time walk, but it's at least moment speeds. Block, cast strands, I'm at seven. So they could theoretically kill me in response with like Fire Blast, Lightning Bolt, but they don't, they have a land. So you get Oracle, grab an island, just need more mana to dump my hand out. Game answer, return Ephemerate. And now I can defend the Ephemerate loop with the, the strands. And I don't even have to, I have enough creatures so that if they attack, I don't have to use this for combat. Then they can see it. So now under round four. Alright, so the first hand I can't keep, I had uh, Ash Barons and uh, Mire. It's a bit slow. This hand is okay. It's a bit slow for the draw, and they're on Mono Blue. So this, I, I feel like at this point I was like, oh, I'm probably dead. I don't have a turn one play or a turn two play. I'm probably just going to die, but... It's fine. Because I'm, because I'm mulliganed, I can't play the Chancery and not go to clean up. They attack. Ninja, definitely the less scary of the ninjas. Descry, one top, one bottom. I draw a Faithful, which is definitely my best draw. Play the Chancery, pick up the land. So they snap. Get in. Open Mind, very nice grant. This is classic Mono Blue. They missed their third land drop because they don't play Cantrips. And they, I don't know. Uh, play Faithful and play Modern Age. I want to get the cheap cards out of my hand because the more expensive cards um, are harder to counter with Spell Setter Sprite. So, like, they went down a card to kill this Faithful or to bounce the Faithful and they went back up the card with Open Mind, but so they're sort of, sort of even on that exchange, I guess. Modern Age is great versus them. You can discard a flicker, that's pretty useless. They attack, I'm gonna block. The mutagenic growth, totally fine. Have to get through those eventually. So now I have strands in the, in the graveyard. I don't have a white creature though, it's a bit of a problem. I find a white creature. They find their third land. <laughs> Snap the Seagate Oracle, which is like. I'm not sure I understand this. They're snapping an ETB creature when there's a flyer on suspend, but they did top eight this event, so they should be somewhat competent. They discard a counterspell. So at this point I was like, oh my god, they discarded a counterspell? Like their hand has to be like three spell setter sprites and a spell pierce or something crazy. It's fine. So I start with our game answer, and they can counter this with spell setter sprite if they want, because they have three fairies. That's fine, they have a counter, so they don't have Spell Setter Sprite, is my guess. At this point, so now I'm just free to play whatever I want, because they only have four counter spells in their deck, so this card is really not scary whatsoever. But really just playing around Spell Setter Sprite when you can is the key to playing around playing against this deck. Play a Faithful, so now I have Strands um, back. They draw land. They're flooding out, as you do when you play Mono Blue. Player came answer, so they would have had to draw a spell setter sprite exactly this turn, and they did. Which is not the worst. It's annoying, but they can't actually pick up the sprite with the the, the um, vector glider in play. Nope, we're gonna block. 
I'm not sure why they made that attack. I guess that was low enough that they want to start Alpha Striking. Play Faithful. They drew another spell Sitter's Bright for turn, which is interesting. Maybe they didn't have mana up for the Arcane Answer? I'm, I'm not sure. No, they did. They did. They used Counterspell. I'm not sure why they... I guess they drew running sprites. Uh, so I play Seagate Oracle, find a Muldrifter, and this card is pretty much unbeatable if it resolves versus this deck. They only have two cards. They do have enough fairies that they could counter the Drifter with the sprite, but not if they attack like this. So they Muta. I have a Strands on the graveyard, so I assume they're going to counter the Strands. And it resolves. They were casting something, but they decided not to. Unstep. I use Ephemerian on the Seagate Oracle. Find a Prohibit. So now I can back up the Moldrifter with a Prohibit. Find another Moldrifter. So now I'm just going to slam spells until they die. Third counter, I'll counter back. They spell Pierce. This keeps them alive, but it doesn't matter. I have more must counters and they have counter spells in their deck, so. Yep, and this is what happens when you're mono blue, you're top decking, and you top deck a one mana one one, because put that card in your deck. So I snap the secret or gold to make some mana. I can play our game answer, pick up ephemerate, ephemerate, pick up prohibit. They're done. Sideboard. Okay, let's see. So, I boarded out one flicker, one Sage's Red Denizen, one Snap. I'm not entirely sure about boarding out Snaps versus this deck. There are definitely a lot of spots where a Snap is great. Like, on turn two, if they Ninja, you can just untap, Snap the Ninja, play your own thing. It's great there. But Snap against, like, a lot of other creatures that have ETBs is not super effective. I don't know. Maybe this is wrong. I definitely like trimming on the flicker effects. Sage's Rodan isn't bad. Uh, I brought in one strands, one to gate, one to spell. Just more counter spells to force through the um, the mold drifters is great because if one of those ever resolves, you just kind of win. I've been told this matchup is bad, but I haven't found that to be the case. So they <laughs> island, so they mold the six and island pass. And this is just like this happens sometimes when you play mono blue. So I, I figured they probably had Brine Barrow here, but there's not much I can do about that. So Island Go. They have no one drop. I'm not sure why they kept, but they did indeed keep. So cycle, play the planes. So now I'm not definitely not going to play my one drops because next turn I can go faithful with prohibit backup. So I could play the modern age into Spell Pierce, or I could just pass, uh, because generally as the game goes on, they will miss their land drops way more than you will. And uh, I think generally, if you're not being pressured against this deck, just passing is the best play. Let's see if I do that or not. I do. So you go and turn Spell Sitter Sprite. I'm gonna counter that. They obviously have a ninja in their hand. And they miss their land drop, which is perfect. Play the Modern Age, see if they have Spell Pierce. They do, but now this shuts off a Spell Sitter Sprite, so now I can cast pre uh, Preordain. Find the Planes. They play Fairy Miscreant, the old one minute one one. Now I get to resolve my Arcane Mancer, get a counter. They attack, got a block, put in a Ninja. They play the Fairy. So now I have an option. I can either play a Faithful and hold up two counters, or I can resolve Moldrifter. I think resolving Moldrifters ends up being better here, but I don't know. Maybe maybe this is wrong. So now I draw Strands, which is nice, because so I can go like Faithful with counters and then Strands on their turn if they don't counter. Elf on Mind, they draw two. That's fine, because all their cards are bad. They murder our creatures, which is fine. Play Faithful. Attack in. So now I think of for mutagenic, I can cast strands. They don't, they ninja. So I strands anyways. This is sort of like trading a card for a card. 
Obviously, our card costs more mana, but it's fine. Play Miscreant. So now they're like the, the model blue list that I've seen online, like basically zero of them run Force Spike. So in this spot, you can just slam a Drifter. It feels great. And if they want to get in with their stuff, they're going to have to crack the Relic on this step. They do. They play another land, get in. I decided to trade with the ninja. We'll try to. They play Brine Barrow, which is fine. They get to eat the Drifter. I'm up two cards on the exchange, so it's not the end of the world. Play a second Faithful. Play Preordain. They could. So it's possible they have spell sort of sprite, but they know that I run counter spells, so they're not gonna like get their sprite countered. But I feel like at this point their hand is just not good. I decided to pass, just hold up double counter. Because if they had like spell sort of sprite spell pierce there, if I play familiar, I counter. Or they counter, I counter back, they counter back, and they untap and do some crazy shit. I don't want that to happen. So they attack with everything, I block. Put in a ninja, totally fine. They pass. So they're holding up three mana specifically. They chose not to play replay their guy. I guess their guy is flash. Never mind. Ashburns. So now I can play familiar with Triple counter backup, I think. Yeah. No, just double. And now all these are now cost one instead of two, which is like huge. So next turn I can like evoke drifter with triple counter backup. Like your good drifter, snap drifter with triple counter backup, and it's gonna be very hard for them to win. They go to snap. I decide to counter with any gate. I don't know. Maybe it's wrong, but I now have way more mana than them, so it seems okay. Line up some blocks. All right, so now I think what I thought was, can I go Drifter Snap Drifter with double counter backup while also playing around Spell Pierce? Because all they can have here is two two hard counters and one Spell Pierce. And I think, so let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven mana. So this is three mana for Drifter Snap, and then four, five for two prohibits, and then six, seven to pay for Spell Pierce. So I can do this. And this is like, what I like to do against the stack is you can sort of like checkmate them where like there's no sequence of counters they can have to counter your stuff and then I go for it. Sometimes obviously you have to go for it before but Focal Drifter, you go to snap my familiar and I decide to counter because it obviously I need this familiar in play to resolve the rest of my stuff. They counter back, I counter back. Now the only card they can have is Spell Pierce, because they could have Dispel, but it's not a guarantee they even run that. Perfect, I snap, and they're done. Because even if I, like, they can't, they can't Spell Pierce the Drift on the way back down, so. All right, round five. We're against Live. So I knew this player was going to be on walls. So obviously can't keep a one-lander. This hand's okay. Let's see if I keep this, I don't know. I do. Your day, need, need to find a land. Hopefully, bounce land. Yep. They're indeed on walls. Preordain finds a land in an Arcane Mancer. I think I bought them both. I'm looking for a Famorous Snap. The most important cards in this matchup are Fams and Snaps. Find a Fam. Play a Fam. This Faithful is a blank piece of cardboard. As usual, they play some walls. Modern Age. Discard Deep Analysis, Flashback Deep Analysis. No reason to play the Faithful, because I want to um, discard it to the Modern Age. At this point, I'm just like thinking I'm super dead. Like, when you let the opponent untap with Axe Guardian, you basically just ask to lose. So I ask to lose, see if they kill me. They don't kill me. Discard Faithful, play Familiar. So now I have a Prohibit holding up for a 2-drop, but I can't counter um, a 3-drop. And like I'm, I'm dead to this because what they can do, well they can drift for a Galenic Alchemist and play that, but they can even like, they have a Quarian Ranger in play, so they can go like, drift for drift, drift for reaping, return these two, drift for a Galvanic Alchemist, play that, because I could have snap I guess, so that's why they did this instead of the um, enchantment, and then use the other drift to find um, Invoker. So I'm dead, but I'll make them do it.
a transmute for drift and Liv's a very good player so he's gonna do this properly he's gonna go like drift for drift drift for drift drift for reaping reaping them all back to like try to beat everything because <laughs> they have infinite mana now and i'm dead but i'm just gonna make them play it out because it's a challenge i'll concede when they find the, the payoff but I, can, I guess I scooped there. Seems reasonable. Alrighty. Game two. On the play. First hand is a mulligans, one lander. Oh, let's see how I sideboarded. Okay. So I boarded out a bunch of blank cards. I boarded out four faithfuls and one strands. And I boarded in, what did I board in? Three hydroblasts, two negates. The hydroblasts are not good versus this deck. They're just not good, but they're better than the um, Faithfuls, and they can at least hit the um, the Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort. Trying to Hydroblast the payoff is just not a good plan, because, like, trying to beat your opponent when they have infinite mana is just not a good plan, but the Faithfuls just do straight up nothing, so. Alright, down to six. I also know this opponent specifically is going to bring in um, the standard bear versus me because some of the fans players play inside out. I'm not right now, but makes sense. All right, we're both developing. They're casting lead the stampede. Definitely not good for me. They find rubble fort invoker. The rubble fort is really annoying to play against as a blue player because usually you have a, a turn to bounce the creatures instead of having to counter them all, but with the um, the Rubble Fort in play, not so much. So I have Ephemerate going now. They play the, the Standard Bear that we knew about. Well, knew was in their deck, at least. I'll find a Snap. Snap. Snap the Rubble Fort. And I'll plan to counter it on the way back down. I can Evoke Ephemerate and then have Prohibit up for the 3-drop. To counter. I definitely feel like I need a familiar at this point. I play shield wall, find axe vein. So now I have a familiar, which is definitely the best draw in my deck. So let's go familiar, flashback DA, other familiar. Oh, I snapped. Oh my god, there's so many good things going on. But I assembled a win. So now I have. I managed to draw into a second familiar and a flicker. So I just mill them out. <sighs> Game three. One lander can't keep that. This was a risky hand, but it has familiar and negate, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it's not, no, not the worst hand. A bit slow though. But you have to keep risky hands in, in this sort of matchup where you're unfavored, I think. Winding Way. They mill three for us. Classic Winding Way. Try to do Familiar. I think they're going to be probably too fast because I'm on the draw. If I could have negated this, then it would have been good. Yeah, so they draw five cards off of the Lead the Snape Play Familiar. Evoke a Drifter. I feel like holding up the gate is just not a good plan versus this hand of magic cards. I need to find snaps, and I need to find um, arcane answers and ephemerates, or I'm just going to die. Like, negate is not a functional versus this hand of magic cards. Play some walls. I invoke a drifter, hope to draw ephemerate. I don't. So now I'm out of card draw. Like, I could have hard cast this drifter, and then had it around in the future to draw whenever I draw snaps or um, ephemerates or flickers, but... I decided to take a risky line, and I didn't draw anything anyway, so it doesn't matter. Negate the lead the stampede. And I think at this point I'm just deterministically dead if they want to kill me. They drift for lead, so they, they took a less risky line, which I think is still going to work, but they got a brick. I find a snap, which maybe if I would have hard cast the drifter and 
I wouldn't have been able to negate or leave this debut, I think, though. I don't know that I had enough mana to hard cast. No, maybe I did. I'm not sure. It could have been a mistake. Maybe I was supposed to hard cast and just hope they didn't kill me on that turn. I felt like it was pretty likely they were going to, though. All right, so now I have a snap. They have lots and lots and lots of mana. Another Drift Rogue event, Galvanic Alchemist, and now if they have a payoff, I just lose. If they have, so they pulse back the thing. So now I just have to hope that these two Hydro Blasts are enough. Which, if they just go for the um, the green creature, I think it will not be enough, but Vivian's Grizzly. Transmute. Go for the Invoker. Cast Invoker, I'll counter. Another drift, drift for reaping. And at this point, I probably could have just scooped because they're going to reaping back the drifts. So I guess the only hope here is that they don't have. Well, they can kill me with secret door, theoretically, but um, there's a pulse of the moss in the graveyard. So theoretically, they could reaping the graves back Velika Invoker. I could counter that. They don't have. Um, either Mnemonic Wall or Repository Scop in their deck, because they boarded it out. And then I win. So that's basically my only hope at this point. And I don't think they used Aquarian, so like I can't snap their dude in response. Doesn't actually work. If I could I have actually snapped the skin response? No, because they yeah, they're just on top of the query and make infinite mana in response and then kill me. Doesn't actually do anything. They find freed from the real to speed up the combo, which is fine. Again, there's no real point in snapping this unless my plan is to time them out. And I don't think I can time them out with 13 minutes. Falcon Invoker. I'll counter. They transmute for Grizzly, and this is the card that I can't beat. Um, but now I just have to hope they don't have... Um, so they can draw their deck now, all the creatures. But I just have to hope they don't have... Um, so they have Secret Door. So they, they can technically kill me with Secret Door, but I want to see if they boarded out um, Repository Scop or not. Because if they have that in their deck, they're going to dig for that instead of playing a Secret Door and try to kill... Because the Secret Door kill takes forever. I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. I think at some point I need to snap so that I can have six. Yeah. And then I just have six. All right, there's a scope, and then I scoop. All right, so that was five rounds. Round six. Against Brevenix. Uh, this player likes to play fairies sometimes. I know they played Tron at one point. So they're a mono blue. They attack, no blocks. Play a fairy, all of a mind, cycle. 
don't have a turn to play. I can choose to snap either the Brian Bear or the Fairy. I decided to bounce the Fairy. I don't know that it really matters here. The only thing I can think of is if they draw another Fairy Miscreant, then they have to replay both. I don't know that it matters. Because this way, if they go for a ninja, I can just bounce it. Obviously, if it's a one mana ninja, I probably won't, because then they can just ninja again in response. They go for a ninja, I try to snap. And if they have a one mana ninja, I kind of get blown out here, because they can ninja again, but it's fine. Then I can untap and slam my stuff. So I bounce. All right, so they pass, because they have the Brine Barrow, so they don't need to um, play their ground their main phase. Play Seagate Oracle. Sort of punishes them for the Brine Barrow. They snap my Seagate Oracle, which is always a good feeling when they snap your ETB creature. They play the ninja that we know about, which is fine. So I snap. I play Seagate Oracle. I'm not sure why I didn't snap. I think that might have been better. I guess I would have gotten countered regardless. I do generally like to hold on to my snaps until I find a familiar because um, obviously they're better, but snap snap. Not the most useful thing ever. I also can ephemerate if they go for Muta or whatever. So they have six lands. The block. Go for the end step ephemerate. They spell pierce, totally fine. At this point, I think. So I play faithful. They have spell sort of sprite, which is fine. I just need to fight through the sprites. They have another one. I could have maybe slammed the drifter. Hmm. Not sure. At least in this spot I make them have two sprites instead of just one counter. Alright, slam the drifter. They don't have a counter. So now I have the mire, so I can do the classic. Mire back the drifter, play it again. So now, if, even if I counter this, I'll just put it back on top. I decided to play this, the Mire. I could have held them, maybe held the Mire for these Moldrifters, Mold Drifters, because if I ever want to get into combat, I, they either have to bounce the Drifters or kill them with Mutagenic Growth. And in, in either case, I can replay them, so. Put in a Hacker, and there you scoop. I guess their hand is not very good. Game two. Three Ash Brands can't keep that. That's why I'm playing only playing three Ash Brands, is because there's a lot of opening hands where if you have like a fetch land and an Ash Brands you can keep, or if you have multiple Ash Brands you can't. I don't know, I could be wrong, who knows? Best draw, draw faithful. And they don't have a one drop again. They do snap, which is totally fine. So now I play my duel. I definitely can't play the faithful in a spell setter, right? Just pass. Play the spread anyways. Totally fine. Just, they decide to ninja. Alrighty. This is why Seagate Oracle is broken because, like, it's basically more cards that my opponent has to counter. Like, if I only have four Moldrifters in my deck as cards that have to be countered, then it becomes very easy for them to just line up their counter spells with the Moldrifters. But if I have Seagate Oracles that also sort of have to be countered, it sort of makes my deck a lot stronger. All right, the attack for one. We put in the ninja that we know about. No, we, I don't think we know about that one, actually. So now I have Faithfuls, and they have Spell Center Sprite. So I can either choose to try to play these into the Sprite and like fight through it, or just wait a couple turns. If they ever tap out, I can go Drifter Ephemerate. So sort of they have like two lands that they actually don't, like can't use. So they put um, Bone Splitter on the Ninja. I try to bounce it. They spell Pierce, totally fine. Well, not totally fine, but I choose to jump block and Ephemerate. So now they have to have Spell Pierce and they don't. So now I can go, I use the Ephemerate. So now I can just hard cast a Drifter, I guess, or play three Faithfuls or two Faithfuls. 
find Seagate Oracle. Or no, I take a Moldrifter. Hmm. It's possible I could have taken the Seagate Oracle, played two Faithfuls, played the Seagate Oracle, and then played to double block this ninja. I think that would have been better than the play that I made. Yeah, I don't like this so much actually. I think the other play would have been better. Oh well. So now I have a bunch of cards in my hand that I'm going to die. Like, I'm just going to die with a bunch of cards in my hand. Not ideal. Discard strands. Play faithful. I counter the faithful so that I can't use the strands. Yeah, I don't like how I played this game. So I had to block the ninja, of course. The ninja back the sprite. Ninja back the other guy. Yuta. So now I'm at five. Yeah, I really feel like I played this game wrong. I should have played the Faithfuls while they were tapped out so that this didn't happen. So now I go for Drifter Ephemerate while they're tapped out. So now I have a Strands on the graveyard. They have one, two, three, four, five, six. So I can block, like I can block here with a Moldrifter and here with a Faithful and take five. So I'm dead to a ninja. So I have to consider whether or not I want to use strands on, on their upkeep. Because if I use strands on their upkeep and it resolves, then I'm fine. But if it gets countered, then I'm dead for sure. But if I block and then use strands, then they could have a counter and a ninja and kill me, but they get a draw step to find those cards. So I pass. It gets open mind, I respond with strands. So now if they counter this, I lose. And they do, so I lose. Yeah, I don't I think I made some mistakes this game. Alright, game three. I'm showing the sideboard again for some reason. I don't think I changed anything. Alright, on the play. This hand is fine. I have both my colors. Turn to play on the play. So it's fine. Alright, I can bleed to play a familiar with the modern age. See what I choose to do. Choose to play the familiar. Makes sense, because then the modern age is better. I play the modern age, just card with prismatic strands. I don't have a lot going on here, but I decided to flashback strands here to trade for one card. I guess it's fine. I guess it's fine. Discard flicker, say go. The only downside now is that if they have mutagenic growth, I have to use one of my spells to um, bounce the guy. So they have some sort of counter. They don't want to use it. I sort of traded snap for mutagenic growth here. They replay a fairy, pass back. I still don't have much going on, but if I ever draw, so I don't play my land, because if I ever draw a Moldrifter, I can go Moldrifter, they counter, I mire it back, they counter, I play transfer, I pick up mire, play a mire, mire back the Moldrifter, play it, and they have to have three counters. There's an Archaea Mancer. See if they want to counter that. Looks like they do. So I mire it back. It's not actually really doing much here. Like, I can start ephemerating loop, ephemerate looping, but all I'm drawing is snap. So, they have one mine twice, it's fine. Play your Cayman Mancer again. Resolves this time, so now I have a flicker. Draw the mire. The flicker is okay here, I guess. I can, like, counter a snap. So now they play a sprite. So now if they they have two fairies in play, so the spell center sprite can now counter the, um, the flicker. They snap the glider. They go for a flicker. They have the sprite. This is the this like they basically showed me they had this they had this sprite when they played the second sprite on the end step because they knew that I had flicker. So the only reason it make the only sensical reason that they would play this out. Is because they had another one, but I decided to play into it. So 
So if I hope they don't have a third one, or they decide to ninja this back, in which case I can use Ephemerate to return my flicker. So they tap out to draw two. Makes sense. I draw Seagate Oracle, which is great. Draw Mold Drifter. So now I can go Drifter Ephemerate. So they decided to tap out. So now I have a Modern Age. I could have played this Plains and then played the Faithful and then played the Modern Age. I think that was a better play. Yeah, that was definitely a better play. So they have three ninjas in play and I only have two blockers. Yeah, I don't know what I was doing here. To be fair, the, the challenges start at 2 a.m. for me, so sometimes a bit tired. Yeah, this is really bad. Because now they, now they just get to loot for free. Definitely a mistake. So they have to count on the ephemerate. Now I have free reign over the turn because they're tapped out. So I preordain. I only play one faithful because I figure um, I, might want, I might want to use all this mana. Find a mold drifter. I do end up using all this mana. So now I feel like I probably won. So all their cards are bad now. All their cards are 1 1 flyers and I have 2 2 2, two flyers. So basically they just die. Return the mire. Pass the turn. And basically, because I have the mire in my deck, I get like so I have four mold drifters in my deck, plus the mire, plus four four bounce lands. So that's nine mold drifters they have to counter. I attack hoping they'll block. I don't I don't know. I think this was a bad attack, but Not the worst attack, I guess. Because I can still block the both of the sprites. So they mutal one. Return the other one. It's really bad for me. So they get, get to put a ninja in. This was uh, almost certainly a mistake. So now I just pass. Like once I have more car cards in my hand than they have counter spells, then I'll just play them all. It's not like I'm choked on mana or anything. And they can't attack because I'll block with the mill drifters. If they ever kill these, I'll just replay them. So And like there's no way they have more counter spells in their deck than I have counter cards to be countered. Deep analysis is fantastic. Play the modern age. Yep, discard but bounce land. Bounce Land is another Mire, but it's fine. Play Ferris here. Yep. And this is the stage of the game where all their cards are worse than mine, so. Discard Brooding, play Faithful. Flashback DA. Play Archaeomancer. And if they feel like they have to. So he boarded in Psychic Barrier, which I've never seen this card in my life, but. I guess it works as more copies of Counterspell, but I can beat like a very large number of Counterspells with a Mortuary Mire Bounce Land combo. Mire it back. If I ever get the Ephemerate Aggressive Flicker back, I can make Infinite Life with this Familiar, but also I can just counter their stuff. If I ever find a, find a counter, I can loop the Counterspell forever. All right, they pass. Game answer. I counter again, and I'm not really worried about spell center spread at this point. I think that I know they have one in their hand from when they returned it, but they can't actually ninja to the back, so it doesn't really matter. All right, I attack. So now I have blockers, and I have to get them dead eventually. I only have 19 cards in my deck. All right, they're attacking. So I had to block the Miscreant. It's obviously better because if they ever draw another Miscreant, well, I'd, basically there's no reason to block the Fairy Seers because even if I block the first Fairy Seer, they can just return the other one. So I like to start picking these guys off when I can. Because if they like return this um, second one to their hand with the first one still in play, 
you get to draw another card. So I cast Prismatic Transit Resolves. It's a bit awkward because when I name blue, yeah, they don't get to draw a card, but also I don't get to kill their Miscreant here, so. But I think it's worth it. Draw a land, play familiar. Draw two, more familiars. I feel like the rest of my deck's gotta be like mostly gas. I should have like another okay Manzer, some drifters, a bunch of counters. I don't think I've drawn that many counters this game. And I attack with a bunch. I still have the strengths in my graveyard, so I'm not super worried about much. And they're at six, so like I'm I'm sort of the beat down now. They need just do the Moonblade Shinobi. I flashback strands. They counter. Keep in mind I have Arcane Mancer on top of my deck and this um deep deep analysis in my graveyard, so flash it back, find a negate, and a snap. Now they have two mana here, so even if they have a spell setter sprite, I can just snap the other Arcane Mancer, replay it, return ephemerate, ephemerate, return ghostly flicker. And gain infinite life. Play sprite. Snap the mancer. Play familiar. Play the mancer. Return ephemerate. Ephemerate. Return flicker. And I have infinite life. I also can like flicker the mire and the mancer. Put the other mancer on top. Flicker the arcane mancer. Drifter. Draw two cards. Replay the other one. And then have infinite snaps. Snap their entire board. You get the idea. All right, so I think this is the top eight, and I sell and play planes. So I was like, either this is a white weenie and this is a free win, or it's the mirror, and uh, I'm probably gonna lose because I'm on the draw. Find a planes. They play Rafines and Foreman. At this point, I'm like, hell yeah, this deck sucks. Play my uh, snap the informant, just so that I'm not taking damage. Discard Pyridane. They replay the informant. Find a period in. This is gasoline. I have familiar, snap, and waste to draw cards. Like, this is exactly what you want to see when playing this deck. Play the Seagate Oracle. If I ever find a bounce land, I can, like, go float a white, bounce land, familiar, snap, untap two, evoke Moldrifter, snap the Moldrifter, replay the Moldrifter. Well, I guess I can't replay it, but you get the idea. The longer I hold these, the better they get, basically. So I play familiar, snap the Seagate Oracle and replay it, trying to hit a land drop. Find an Ephemerate, which is not a land drop. It's not bad though. I'm taking a bunch of damage. So now I'm thinking, okay, if they have Guardian Splash, how can I live? I return a snap, snap again. Ephemerate, return snap, snap again. So now I don't think I, I think I counted. I'm not dead to Guardian Splash. Because I can block and then flicker. And they're stuck on two lands, so they would have to draw land. Let's see, I decided not to block. So I could have traded off this glider for one of these guys, but this glider is kind of holding down the air, so I didn't want to do that. And then I could have also block, block with the Seagate Oracle and the Arcane Mancer, and then flicker to save six damage. But I was worried about them having. Um, uh, Journey to Nowhere, and I wanted to play around that with the Ghostly Flicker, but they don't. They have Squadron Hawk. I'm also very close to having Infinite Life. Just need one more familiar. And here, this is where the Magic Online bugged out. So I don't know if this game actually went on best here, but I did end up winning. Um, I think I just like found another familiar and gained Infinite Life or something. Let's see. Yeah, so I went out and replayed the game. And it still got stuck in the same spot. So for some reason Magic Online didn't like the uh Oh no, it went it went past. Let's see. Okay. Okay, so I snap. Play the Mancer, pick up snap, snap again, skip forward a bit. Okay, so I get I go to my turn. Okay, perfect. Here we go. So end step. Oh, magic online was 
being weird. Oh, come on. Very frustrating. My video replay thing isn't being very effective. All right, 5639. Here we go. Yeah, I see Magic Online is like stuck here again. I think I got one one more turn through and then it got bugged again on the um this this stack here. I guess I go to game two because it was bugging out. Alright. So at this point I actually hadn't restarted my game. Um the whole tournament. So I was at 14 minutes. So I said decided to restart my game. And let's see, I boarded out a snap and a deep analysis. Snap might actually just be good against their deck, but a lot of their creatures have ETBs, so I decided to board one out. I don't have time for this, and I boarded in two strands. I think for game three, I ended up boarding in Revoke Existences, because you can hit both Relic and Journey to Nowhere, which I think is good. So yeah, I think I sideboard differently for game three than I do for game two. Very unfortunate technical difficulties. All right, they have some random creatures. Preordain, looking for a familiar. I guess I could take the Ephemerate. They have a Relic. I have a familiar, I play Seagate Oracle. Because if I can find a snap, I can do more powerful things with the familiar next turn than just playing it out. No blocks. I can go familiar, Seagate Oracle. I guess they held up a bit. Not sure if this is correct, because I can't actually counter Guardian's Pledge, but I can at least ephemerate after blocks if they have Guardian's Pledge. So I decided to block. And I generally, against White Weenie, just want to get them to use their Guardian's Pledge as soon as possible, because if they're using that card to not kill me, it's a very, uh, like that card is sort of the payoff for their whole deck, so if they don't have it, their deck is just really bad. Guardian's Pledge. I choose to ephemerate the familiar, which I think makes sense. I do lose that on two sleight of hands, but this familiar is gonna do a lot for me. And especially if I can draw like a snap, I can go like snap, arcane mancer, turn ephemerate, ephemerate, arcane mancer, snap. I guess I don't, don't quite have the mana for that. No, I can, yeah. And then I can have snap looping every turn, so. I guess not with a relic in play, but please see it, Oracle. Find a faithful. So now I'm I was looking for um. I don't know what I was looking for. I need like a prismatic trance or something. I guess that doesn't even work. No, it does work. Yeah. Uh, I need to hard cast a strands here to try to survive against um. Another guardian's pledge. But I didn't find it, so now if they have another Guardian's Pledge, I just lose. And they do. Sometimes they're going to draw two of this in their top 15 cards, in their deck with no card selection, so it is what it is. Game 3. I guess they do have some card selection, just no cantrips. Okay, so I guess I didn't board in Revoke Existence. I suppose that makes sense. I like, I really like Revoke Existence, like one copy versus Cogates. All right, the sand is better. I'm also on the play, which is better. Find a Muldrifter. At this point, I'm just bottoming anything into the land. I already have a lot of those. Bottom some more lands. So they played a Skyfisher and returned their other creature, which is, does not, not exactly inspire confidence. They play the Modern Age, I discard a land. This turn I can go Snap Drifter. <clears throat> it's 
Snap the Skyfisher. Play a Drifter on turn four. Feels great. They replay the Skyfisher. They still don't have any attacks, which is nice. Play another Drifter. Journey the Drifter. Yeah, Revoke Existence would be very nice here. But also there's a lot of spots where we do nothing, so who knows. <clears throat> Play some Fams. Play Snap, make some mana. Turn Snap. Say go. Nothing super interesting here going on, but I'm, I'm very close to doing some broken shit. Well, Drifter's great, so now I can go Drifter, Snap, Drifter. Preordain, find Ephemerate. It's just great. They can't interact with me at all. Drifter, Ephemerate. Drifter, Snap. I think I Ephemerate the Arcane Mancer, Return, Snap, Snap the Drifter. And now I have a counter. Counter the Journey. Oh, I, lo I love the Journey Resolve, because I have more of these in my hand. And if they play, play like a relic, I won't have a counter for that. They crack a clue. Some the drifter. Preordain. So now I'm just looking for um, the combo to mill them out. Return ephemerate, ephemerate, return snap. Just pass again. Hold up prismatic strands in case anything goes wrong. Not that anything really can go wrong. Okay. <clears throat> and now at this point, I'm at nine minutes, 10 minutes on my clock, so as long as I don't time out, I should win. Flashback strands, line up some blocks. Or cast strands, I mean. Just drawing, drawing, drawing. I have, I have infinite life now, but it doesn't matter, as per usual. Find a preordain. Preordain is the fastest way to dig for cards. Like Drifter draws two, but preordain looks at three. So oftentimes I like a fun for preordain when I'm when I know of one. The play relic, I'll counter. Crack a clue. Play squadron. Here they pass, so I just flickered. Now I just need to draw the Sage's Row, which I do. And now it's just a bunch of clicking. I think I snapped all my Faithfuls here because it's faster that way. There's no triggers on the stack. Yeah. It's returning the, uh, the snaps that I could return the, the Faithfuls, and now I'm just milling them out. And they scoop. Whoa. All right. So <clears throat> this is the semifinals, and it's a rematch against Mono Blue. And this hand is like perfect against Mono Blue. I don't know if I could ask for a better hand. I guess this could be a bounce line, maybe. I don't know. Play nine and a pass, so I guess they have the um, Brian Barrow. Play familiar. They attack. I'm definitely not blocking here because, based on the makeup of my hand, the familiar is going to be really strong. So they put in a ninja. Play the modern age. Discard our game answer. I wasn't really sure about what to discard, but. I think these four cards are all stronger than Arcane Answer. So if they ever tap out, I'm just going to go Drifter, Ephemerate, and they will lose. So again, I don't block. 
It looks like they have a two-man ninja, and I, I would love for them to tap out for that. That would be great. They, they do not. They loot away a Spire Golem, which is odd, but interesting card choice. Discard a second Ephemerate. So now I know that if they go for Spell Sitter Sprite on this Preordain, I can snap the Sprite and then go um, Drift for Ephemerate and also have this Preordain up. So, or and also resolve the Preordain, so. And they have to have Spell Pierce, which they don't. And like, they would have Spell Pierce to snap if they had one, which leaves me, still leaves me with these cards. So I don't have to be worried about Spell Pierce now. Evoke. Ephemerate, transfer is great, and now I'm free to, to block with a familiar because um I don't I've already resolved my like main main payoff. I decided not to block with a multi free because they could have like I'd like for them to have to counter the ephemerate on the way back down. Or on my upkeep I mean. Ephemerate. You gotta counter. I do not counter back. Maybe I should have countered back. Mm, I think it's fine. I just really want to use the prohibit to protect the um, other mold here. They draw two. Once again, like <clears throat> this draw two cards is not as powerful as our draw two cards because their cards are like all one mana one ones, and our cards are four mana draw. Like this draws six cards. This is draws two cards, whereas the other cards are crappy one ones. Or one twos. So after they, let's go back here. Sort of a key spot. So I line up blocks. And they get priority first. Well, for some reason the uh, replay thing isn't working super well. Okay, so I pass. They draw two cards. They attack. I block. Now they have priority first, so if they want to use combat tricks, they have to use them. So they mutagenic growth. I pass priority again. Or I pass priority on this, it resolves, and they get priority again. They use the brine barrow. And then they pass priority to me. And then I'll cast my magic strands and get a nice two for one here. I get to counter, sort of counter, quote unquote, the Brian Barrow and the mutagenic growth with the strands, and then still have it in the graveyard. <clears throat> Play familiar. If they counter, this is fine. If they don't, it's also fine. They attack with everything. I remember I have the strands in the graveyard, so I'm not super worried. They put in the ninja. Cast Brian Barrow. I flashback strand so they don't draw a card. They do get to keep their um, ninja here, but it's not the most consequential thing. Play a familiar, Wildrifter, and they're dead. They even had a counter backup, and they didn't have a counter. Alright, game two. <clears throat> So I think I sideboarded roughly the same. Yeah, I brought in the strands, brought in the negate, I brought in the dispel. This time I decided to trim a preordain um, instead of, I don't know, maybe like a seagate. Uh, I think trimming a cantrip on the draw against this deck can be good because you're able to hit your land drops reasonably well on the draw and um, they sort of punish the cantrips with um, spell stutter sprite, but I could be wrong. Keep this hand. It's a bit slow. I'm like, I'm only going to be able to cast one spell per turn, starting on turn two. But the Faithfuls are, are very strong, so. And I draw planes, which is a nice draw. And I can start deploying these guys on turn one. So they have a spell setter sprite up, oh, so I'm not going to play my card. <clears throat> no blocks. Play Fairy Seer. So now, th this Fairy Seer is kind of annoying. Because if I want to play around Spell Setter Sprite, <clears throat> I can't actually cast the Seagate Oracle and I'm just going to end up passing. Which is okay, but it's not great. So I cycle for an island. And now 
I have to decide, do I want to just pass to them and do nothing? Or do I want to play into Spellsitter Sprite? Um, what I can also do is play this island, cast the Faithful and represent a counter to counter back, and maybe they won't play the Sprite in that case. So I swap phases to see if they're F6, which obviously they're not going to F6, but worth a try. Cast the Faithful, and they don't counter, I think. Yeah, so either they don't have a Sprite, or they have a Sprite and they decided not to use it because I'm representing a counter. More lands. They did scry two to the bottom, it's worth noting. I play an Evoke a Drifter, so this can't be sprited. Play an island, pass back, take two. They play another land, and they should be holding lands in their hand because they have um, the ninja the loots. So I imagine they have at least one more land in their hand. Play Faithful. I was kind of hoping they would sprite this if they had it, but that way I could resolve my Seagate Oracle. Here it is. So I don't know if they just drew this or they were playing around a counter, but here's a sprite. So now if they have a ninja, they get to pick it back up. I don't know if they would have been sandbagging the ninja, maybe. They don't. So now if I choose to play either of these four drops, they get sprited. But I think like, they have two cards in their hand, and I have, you know, sort of three must counter spells in Arcane Answer, Deep Analysis, and the Flashback, so I can sort of power through. As, I, as I've said before, the whole purpose of Deep Analysis is to um, fight through counter spells, so. They did draw an Ninja for turn, looks like. If they ever tap out, I get to do some crazy stuff, so. But this Dispel isn't particularly effective because they have Spell Center Sprite for it, so. I play the Modern Age, they choose not to Sprite, which is interesting. Choose to hard cast a Drifter, so now if they have a counter, they're going to use it, and they don't. So now I know they don't have any counter spells, all they have is one Spell Center Sprite. I guess they could have more than one, technically, but a block. They have the Moonblade Shinobi. I don't know if this card is good, but probably not. I guess this explains why they uh, weren't doing anything, because if they wanted to do this in a custom, like all their mana. Here's a loot. Played Evoke Drifter. They counter. I imagine I would use Dispel here. Hmm. I feel like I should have used Dispel there. I suppose it doesn't really matter. Snap, Untap, Relay, Fam. Now I have a Fem right up. They have a. I know they have a counter for it, so. There's no use in playing it unless they um, act first. I'll line up some blocks. Immuta. I feel like I should, yeah, force them to use a sprite now. now they have Spell Pierce. So now that I know their last card is Spell Setter Sprite. And. So if I ever find like another must counter, then I just win. <clears throat> they spread the modern age. I guess this is desperation. But now I just arcane answer return ephemerate, ephemerate return ephemerate, ephemerate return flicker, blah blah blah, I win. I don't even return flicker, I just return a counter, because they have no cards. And they scoop. Alright, final round. So <clears throat> This player, um, I know is a grinder, and I knew that they were on Cogates because somebody in the Discord had um, told me. So they offered a split before the match started. They offered a split, and I said no, because Cogates is a great matchup. And there unfortunately was some some errors, like technical difficulty in the um, recording, so I might end up missing part of the um, one of the games, but. So this hand is pretty good. On the play with it, bounce line is great. Uh, we've got some card draw. I decided not to play the Preordain. Like, this card gets better the longer you wait. I'm just going to cycle on my next turn, play Preordain, and the bounce land. And I don't have to go to discard because I'm on the play. <clears throat> sure enough, they're on card gate. Find a Drifter, don't want another land. If I remember correctly, this game is sort of just like a whole lot of nothing for like the first five turns. Ten turns, maybe? I don't know. Land go, land go. 
I need to hold up this for Hibbit for Guardian of the Guild Pact, because that is by far the best card they could have. I don't know if they play it, but if they do, it's their best card. They have a Heap Gate. This is really good for them, because now they can make a mana every turn. They were doing this, like, Drago game. But I still think the Fams is favored in the long game, especially game one when they only have four counters. It's sort of the same deal against Mono Blue, where you have more than four cards, they have a counter, and they only have four counters, so they're sort of on a clock, so to speak. Okay, so I could just slam a Drifter, but what I'm worried about is that they will counter, untap, play Guardian of the Guild Pact, or, or like um, Squadron Hawk, Brainstorm, or something. So I decided to play the, the Oracle, and then if they do happen to have, um, what's it called? Guardian of the Guild Pact, I can snap my own Seagate Oracle to make four mana, or to make the fourth mana, so that I can kick her up or hit it to counter it. It's also possible they have like Guardian of the Guild Pact with counter backup, but at least if they do that, they tap out so that I can resolve some, some stuff. Finds Deep Analysis and a Modern Age. I think I top both. Or no, I, it's Seagate Oracle, not Preordain. I take the Modern Age. They put Dawnbringer Cleric. I feel like they should be holding this card for the Modern Age, but they were unaware. So they play the Seagate on red, which makes me think that they're on the um, the Cellcast, um build with Fire and Ice. Which is fine. Like Fire Nice is not really great versus familiars, so it's fine. Play the Modern Age. Discard a land. Play a land. And now I really have no idea if their hand is good or not. There can be five counter spells for all I know. Well, I guess four and uh, spell pierce or whatever. So they're pumping in, and this like they have four mana, so they could have two counters. But I'm sort of assuming this is a sign that their hand is bad. So I block, snap. So now I still have mana to counter the Guardian of the Guild Pact, which is really what I'm afraid of here. And they pass. To loot away the snap, play Faithful. I'd like to hit a land drop here, so play Seagate Oracle. So I find it familiar. I could have found the planes and then held up Prohibit for Guardian, but I feel like at this point this is not like the most important thing, like if they tap out for a guardian, I feel like I feel like it would have gone for something earlier. Basically, is what it comes down to. Comes down to, and this familiar is going to allow me to like do a lot more than I would be able to do with just uplanes. <clears throat> okay, they pump, they pump again, and they just spent six mana on very much, not a whole lot. <sighs> My turn. So now I have another familiar. So I assume they're gonna fight over this, but they decide not to. So now my counter magic costs half as much mana, which is just kind of just broken. Play another another familiar. Play a Seagate Oracle. Find Ephemerate. So now I feel like their hand is gonna have to be really, really, really good to win here. Like they need all four copies of Counterspell. I guess Brainstorm. I could have countered this. I feel like I could have maybe figured out their hand is bad and countered this, but. It gets spell pierced, like this gets spell pierced, so it seems like a waste. I play Squadron Hawk, which I think I have to counter. This is their best card by far. They counter back. I counter back. They counter back. So now they're out of spell pierces, because they would have used one. Now I just kind of have to hope they don't have two counter spells. Okay, so now I know they have three Hawks and a Preordain, they went bottom bottom, so, and one random card. So I play Familiar, Evoke a Drifter, or cast a Drifter, I expect this to get countered, which it doesn't, which is weird. Cast another Drifter, so now I have Ephemerate up, and Snap up, so I can like block and snap, and if they counter that, I'll Ephemerate. They have Guardian, it's a bit late. It's a bit late for that. They can do like 18 damage a turn, what's the 14, 16 damage a turn with the Guardian, but it's not actually that much damage at this point. All right, and now it seems like their hand is just, was just bad the whole game, so I can just kind of do whatever I want. Which makes sense, like they have very few actually good cards against us. A lot of their cards are just not very good. 
versus the uh, familiar stack player came answer. Return a counter. So now I have, um, I return another counter just to make sure, but now I have infinite life. So this guardian is useless. <sighs> so here, I, I don't remember doing this where I flickered two islands. I feel like I flickered the arcane answer on an island and then passed, but who knows, it was very early in the morning. And I think this is where, and this, this might've been a magic online bug because I think magic online like freezes here and doesn't play the rest of the replay. So how I remember this happening is that I take this damage and then go to my turn and like draw a bunch of cards, find the um, Seagate Oracle and then mill them out, or sorry, the Sages Road Denison and mill them out, but Magic Online does not think this actually happened. Yeah, I remember like flickering on the end step there, but the flicker is in my graveyard, so who knows. And yeah, I think here Magic Online just freaks out. So let's skip forward. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So unfortunately, we don't get to see the end of that game, but it was basically over from from that spot. So let's see. Okay. Okay. I think I could actually try to go back into game one and play it again, and it doesn't work. So let me just skip forward a bit. Apologies for the confusion. Yeah. See, it just gets stuck here. All right, so I decided to just go to the second replay <clears throat> versus Cogates. I sideboarded it in one dispel, one negate, and one revoke resistance, and I boarded out one faithful, one Seagate Oracle, one snap. Like the most important thing is fighting over the first Mold Drifter, because once you have the first Mold Drifter in play, you can usually like use your snaps and ephemerates and flickers and stuff to pull ahead. But just being able to counter and fight over that is really important. And then if they ever use Revoke Existence on your Mold Drifters or your Arcane Mancers, being able to revoke the um, a Journey to Nowhere is really good value. And then in addition to that, you can revoke the Relics, which is like not great, especially if they have mana up to crack it. But it's sort of like, it's a simple answer to Relic, where sometimes lining up Ephemerates can be awkward. They play a gate. Sand is pretty good. Bottom two lands. Draw another. So now in the postboard games, I assume they're going to have way more counters because they board in like three red blasts. Um, so I sort of uh, want to play around the more. More counters, more. Preordain. So they're holding up a counter. So I decided to cast Arcane Answer. I didn't want to cast Deep Analysis because if they go like untap Relic, Crack, it's going to be sort of awkward. They play a Hawk. And this this double island means they can't pressure me that much with the, with the gates. Preordain Modern Age. Nice, Modern Age. I guess I discard DA and flush it back immediately to play around um, Graveyard Hate. They counter, perfect. Let's see exactly what the card is for, just to get countered. They attack for six. So, eh, it's a bit, but I'm not feeling super threatened. They ice the tap, or the, um, the duel on the upkeep, which does not seem like that strong of a play, because now they're just tapped out and I get to resolve Drifter Ephemerate. I don't really like this play, to be honest. And like, this is, I don't know. <laughs> Once you resolve Drifter drift Ephemerate, you just don't really lose. Especially against the fair blue stuff. Grab a Dispel. Flip this, play some white creatures. Now I can go Drifter, Snap, Drifter, or at least just Drifter, Snap. Yeah, and I can go Drifter Snap, and then Drifter Ephemerate. 
Now if they have a, a relic, they get to hit both of the ephemerates in the graveyard, but I think it's okay. Discard a strands. I even drew a strand so I could discard it to um, hand size. They attack, I'm gonna block. Like worst in case they have fire ice. It's like not even that good. I could have flashback strands and aim red, but I don't know. I feel like this card really does not do that much. Draw two, more counters, put it for game answer on top. At this point, I, I feel like the game's over. <sighs> now I just evoke a drifter so that I can draw the um, arcane answer. Then I can go like arcane answer, get back ephemerate. Play a familiar. I guess I don't play the arcane answer. I guess this makes sense because now I can just hold up all three counters. And then I can chop if I need to. I can flashback strands if I need to. They pump. So they're holding up something. I feel like if they had counter spells, they should have held them up earlier. Tried to counter. Like, they shouldn't have tapped out, tapped out basically, if they had counter spells, but. I don't know. Maybe they just drew the counters. Who knows? Because now I just have a bunch of ways to fight back. They counter. I counter back. They counter back. I counter back. And I even had another counter if they had another one. Return to Ephemerate, Ephemerate, Return to Ephemerate, Ephemerate, Return to Counter. And I can fix my, I can turn this floating blue into an untapped island with the flicker. And yeah, I have infinite life at this point, but whatever. I think I just take the damage. Yeah. Ephemerate, Return to Ephemerate, blah, blah, blah. Now I just need to find um, Sage's Row. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. I mean, at this point, the game is already over, but being able to revoke the Journey to Nowhere and return a Little Drifter and draw two is great. So now I just pass again with a bunch of counters up. They concede. All right, well, thank you for watching. I know that um, I'm still getting used to talking to the camera, and I um, maybe didn't explain everything super well, and there were also some te technical difficulties, but thank you for watching.